tell you about how incredible your profession is. I mean, look at the things that you do. Your retrofit work, preserve the past. Your new work builds the future. But above all, you are in the business of saving lives. You protect humanity from the ravages of windstorms, earthquakes, all natural hazards. It's just that it's taken for granted. It is only because of you that there is even an economic infrastructure. If you stopped working, the progress of humanity would come to a screeching halt. You just have to look around. Every building that's standing is because of you. Every monument that's a testimony to the grandeur of humankind is standing because of you. Basic. These things are just taken for granted. You know, people are totally blown away when they find what you do. I mean, when people ask me, what do you do? I say, I create mathematical models of building them bridges in the computer memory. I blow wind on them, shake them with earthquakes. And the software tells me which portions of the building are gonna break apart so I can fix them before it's even built. And they look at you. Are you some kind of a genius or what? But you see, people don't know. People have no idea what we do. Because we don't invite them. Our conventions are about us. We all get together, talk about the amazing things that we do, pat each other on the back and go home. Meanwhile, outside, nobody has any idea what we do. This concept of belief. Do you really believe that our profession is a gift to humanity? I mean, do you really believe that? Do you really believe we should make more money? Do you believe that our codes are complicated? Do you believe that if smart people leave the profession, it's a question of public safety? All right, we all believe, but do you really believe that? There's a book by this marketing consultant, this amazing guy, Simon Sinek. He talks about this concept of belief. He says, belief is an amazing thing, especially when you have amazing beliefs and you get out and you talk about them. Because when you talk about your beliefs, you attract people that have the same belief you have. You have that instant connection and you bond. And the nice thing about being surrounded by people that have the same beliefs you have, because then they will do things that you want them to do without you even telling them to do it. Because it's not because you want them to do it, it's because that's what their belief is. Especially when you hire people. When you hire somebody that, you know, is working for the money, they do a good job, you're paying them. But when you hire somebody that believes in your mission, believes that this profession is one amazing gift to humanity, they will put their blood, sweat, and tears into the job. And even when money runs out, they will continue to do the work. And if you get out there and talk about what your beliefs are with passion, you tend to convert people that didn't believe what you believe into believing what you believe. Pretty soon you have a following and they will pay you everything that you deserve to be paid. Not because you're asking for it, but because they believe you deserve it. That's the power of belief. But in order for this to happen, it has to start from you. You have to get the public speaking skills. You have to get out there and talk to anybody, one person. Take one person to coffee, tell them. And when people look at it, they say, I never knew structural engineering was this amazing. And then to face the camera. Oh my God, why are we so afraid to face the camera? And an earthquake comes somewhere? I walk up in the middle of the night and there's some dude on CNN standing in front of an amazing base isolated building talking about how the building survived. And they implied in there is that he's taking credit for it. Why? We should be there, it's our shit. Oops. <laughs> But that's the truth though, it's our stuff. But you see, we're scared. 
See, I learned it young and I, I learned it early and I learned it from Madonna. She taught me. What's the point of doing anything unless it's on camera? <laughs> right? Everybody has something to teach you. The Salesforce Tower, the biggest tower in the Western Hemisphere, performance-based design. The only reason that building would actually stand in San Francisco is because of its amazing engineering. There's a mention of some artist. There's a mention of, I think the architect is there. No structural engineer. That's the reason why people don't know. We have so many amazing stories to tell. People are blown away when they find out the things that you do. Learn public speaking, get out there and talk to them. Just one of these things, pick it up. Make friends, talk about your profession. There's so much they want to hear from you. You know the Intel Inside logo? You heard of that, right? You know what it is. And it was never like that. When IBM first started producing personal computers, Nobody knew that there was an Intel processor in there. So Andy Grove, the then chairman of Intel, went to IBM and said, okay guys, nothing's happening. We are not gonna sell any processor unless you put this big logo outside. And now we all know Intel. We know Intel really well. We know it, what it does. We know what its contribution to humanity is. I say that every structure that's built there, that you design, should have this big gold emblem on it, which says structural engineering inside. I know you think I'm crazy, but think about it. It's because of structural engineering that that building even exists. But it's not gonna happen until you demand it. Don't let anybody tell you two things. Number one, don't let them tell you that our profession is not about money. Our profession is about serving the public, which is great. Serving humanity is an amazing thing. But I think I can serve humanity much better if I had my structural license in one pocket and a billion dollars in the other. <laughs> okay? And then, don't let anybody tell you money doesn't buy happiness. They will tell you that, which is BS. Now, money only buys happiness if you do the right thing with it. Money has a bad connotation associated with it because it's not used correctly. Money is not a bad word. Money is a bad word when it is hyphened with greed. You design a building and a real estate agent gets to sell it. The real estate agent gets 6% to sell the building. You get half a percent to design it. The real estate agent will sell the building probably a hundred times during the lifetime of a building. You will get paid once, be completely responsible for the lifetime of the building, and you will go to school for 20 years for that pleasure. Don't blame the real estate agents. They've got it figured out. More power to them. Yours is based on construction cost. Theirs is based on selling price. And many, many times as inflation comes along, they will sell it again. There is something seriously wrong with this picture. It needs to be addressed because smart people are figuring it out that this profession may be a gift to humanity, which it is. But if there's no money, they still have bills to pay and they're looking elsewhere. I talk to a lot of young engineers. They ask me, Ashraf, I'm sitting in an office building. My friend is working in the Salesforce Tower. He's making 10 times more than I am. And my future doesn't really look that bright. What do you think I should do? Should I go to school and get an MBA? These are the questions that our leadership needs to answer. Years ago, a student from Argentina came to attend one of my dynamic analysis courses in New York. She goes back, writes to me this amazing letter. I graduated four years ago, but today I went to work with a new sense of purpose and passion associated with what I do because of what I heard from you. She came for, to learn dynamics, but the biggest lesson she took away was this. What have we 
done as educators if we have taught us structural dynamics, structural mechanics, mechanics of materials, but we have totally failed to instill in her a sense of passion and pride associated and purpose associated with what she does. We have failed her. And that's what we need to know how amazing we are, to take credit for things that we do with pride. Talk about it. But all of this stuff requires what? It requires to step out of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable what you're doing, you're not learning anything new. You know, they say the biggest tragedy in life, the biggest tragedy in life is not death. The biggest tragedy in life is arriving to the end of your life and looking back at all of these opportunities that you missed because you were afraid to answer the door when opportunity knocked. At that point, you won't have to worry about how you are going to die. That thought alone will kill you. So you need to try everything. I didn't want to be an engineer. I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to come to America, put Elvis Presley out of business and run away with Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> and when that didn't seem like it's gonna be possible, I took my father's advice and I said, maybe I should go to Berkeley. <laughs> so here I am. But you see, this isn't too bad, you know? 72-year-old rock star for another 50 years? You got a lot going. So you try everything. Don't go looking for your passion. You try everything. And you know what's gonna happen? Your passion is gonna find you. That's what happened to me. I got into engineering and all of a sudden I realized, my God, is this some profession or what? You start realizing its impact on humanity. Don't tell me that structural engineering is a subset of civil engineering. Structural engineering encompasses all disciplines of engineering. They all use our stuff and it's your technology. You need to own it. It's about taking credit and the world needs to see the things that we do. Guys convinced I'm crazy, right?